Shalom, all praises to Yahweh by Shem Shai, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone by Shem Rakakwadash. My name is Yakaba from Plain Tapers Camp in Philly. And this is on you know, Esau you know, throwing the uh, you know, stumbling blocks, bones, where you'll you'll get confused if you don't have the spirit. And this is why they paid a lot of money to confuse people onto the, the bloodlines and the um the true identity identity of the Israelites. So I'm just gonna play this real quick. Statements. But it's statements you think you should be walking back? I mean, what considering. What do you mean walking back? Well, you know, backing up off of them. I mean, the thing is, you've, you've lost a lot of endorsements. People are dropping you, you're getting, you know, vilified. You know, I mean, you might think you're right, but I think, you know, there's a lot, there's a whole world out there that's condemning you for, for what you said. Okay, so this right here is a chart of uh, Universal Studios, 20, 20th Century Fox, ABC News. CBS, CBS News, uh, DreamWorks Animation. Now, the thing is, I skipped over maybe about five of them because it was just unclear on this list. The red are the executives that are Jewish at these companies. Do you regret your statements? All right, so obviously I've seen that clip before. So, in other words, they, they've paid a lot of money to... Uh, To hide the biblical, who the bigger biblical Israelites are, and they've uh, put bones, you know, within their dictionaries to confuse and throw off the scent, and you know, to do controlled opposition to find out who. So it will be very difficult, nearly impossible, to find out who the biblical Israelites are, because when you research the current uh, small hats, they there's no way they, they, they can be the uh, descendants from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? In fact, they're descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, Edom. And they don't like when you say that. All right? They're not the biblical uh, Israelites. It clearly tells you that the biblical Israelites were going to be poor. They were going to be uh, in captivity amongst all nations and dwelling amongst the heathen. And that there was going to be a small remnant that were going to return. All right? So my point here is to just to show you the uh, the bones they put in. All right, and I'll give you some uh, precepts that will come uh, overcome those bones. It's H seven twenty six, ara arawamya, ara ara wamya, yeah, ara wamya, ara wamya. All right. And sometimes when you see this, it's, it's uh, translated as Adawam instead of Arawam. All right. Adawam means Edom. All right. What well, I say is down here. That's Ara. That's Ara. That this means Syrian here. All right. But here it's translated. When you look up Syrian, sometimes it'll be translated as Adawam. Or Adamia, all right. Which they say that means eat, eat them, which it it, it doesn't. It, it means uh, it's, it's Adam. All right. Ah, uh, the Wam means Esau. Well, not Esau. It means Edom. All right. So the point here is that it's a clerical error. All right. It should say. Ah-ra-wam. It shouldn't say uh, Adamia. Alright? It should say Ah-ra-wam, which means Syrian. Alright? It doesn't mean Edomite. Alright? So that's some of the bones that you'll find when you read, uh, read the scriptures. And it's just to throw you off. This is why only a certain you know group of uh, you no know, studious individuals can come into the faith because you don't uh most people take when, when they see something they just take it literally and if there's one thing wrong they'll just say well in inconclusive or we can't oh i don't know i don't know who to believe well this this overcoming this proves that you are of the elect 
All right. So let's go down here. Make it a little more clearer. So right here it says Ara Wam Yam. That's what's supposed supposed to be there. And this right here it says Ah the Wam Yam. Now that this is a duh, which makes this Edom. All right. And this would this would be Edom, the one in the bottom. Hope you can see that. Which stands for uh and one up top here is Ara Wamium. That means Syrian or Syria. Alright. So it's supposed to read Syrians. It's not supposed to read Edom. Alright. So it says a clerical error for H one thirty. An Edomite as in the margin. Let's see, look up. Let me look here at H130. Right here, he says Adam Ya, which that's not the word that's supposed to be there. What what they're attempting to do is they're trying to reduce it down to Adam, which Adam means of the earth, out of the soil. It doesn't mean Edomite. All right, so they try to merge the two together. That's the same thing they try to they try to merge ruddy with being a pale red skin. Ruddy and pale red skin are not the same. They're not synonymous words. So Adam, Adam Ya, Adam. It, they they'll try to make it mean red, which the proper word for red is Adawam. All right, so you look down. This means red. It says ah, ah, da, wam, yum, the Edomites. All right. That means red. All right. Not Adam. See, they merge the two. They're two different meanings. All right, so if you don't have the understanding, you know, you'll get confused. Especially when you start you know, getting deep into the, uh, the scriptures. All right. It's more than a clerical error. Cause it's a direct lie. A direct injection to throw off the scent of who and what the Israelites look like. All right. Edom. I say Adam means Edom. Adam and Edom are two totally different words. All right, so you have to know the Hebrew, or you're gonna, you're not gonna, or you'll get, you'll get confounded when somebody come up, come up to you, you know, a high level guy. There's nobody high level to, really to us anymore, but uh, if you, uh, you know, new to the faith and you don't know this, they'll confound you, and you'll be sitting there or looking stupid. All right, there's a distinct difference between um, Aram, which means Syrian, Assyria. Aram, then we have here, uh, Dawamyam, which means Edom. And you, then you have Adam, Adam, okay, which means earth, take it from the earth, earth man, soil. All right, there's different shades of brown. It goes back to Genesis, the second chapter, where it says man was taken out of the dust of the ground. All right. Or the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. All right. So we're going to go, we're going to go to that next. Um, all right. So now you got the full understanding on the, the differences and um, what that means. Then you go to Genesis, the second chapter, it says out of the ground. Genesis 2 and 7 and Yahweh formed man of the dust of the, of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul look up ground we got Adama this goes back to Adam alright they say From its general redness, 
so they say that the earth is red uh, so this is a it's not a clerical error this is a direct lie so this is a dhamma all right which that's how to say it means edom it means red it, these are two different words ground land substance all right why because they paid a lot of money a lot of billions of dollars and they set up organizations and bureaucracies around trying to keep you from the truth and then they put like obvious lies in there and if, you, if you're not studious if you, you'll be confused if you don't know the, the, the Hebrew you don't recognize these characters you're going to be confused it says uh, Adama Adama ha. Adama it's, it says soil from its general redness so general means what affecting concerning all or most people places or things widespread so basically they're saying that the soil of the earth is mostly red all right let's go on this a little bit more now it's a dust i par This means dry earth, dust, powder, ashes, earth, ground, mortar, rubbish, dry or loose earth. All right, so you should be able to go. So go into the earth and pull it out and, you know, you know, and smooth it around, crush it with your hands. The dirt. All right. The breeze, not rock. All right. It's rubbish, dust. So soil. So you should be able to dig your hands in the earth, pull it out. Because it's loose. Right? And you should be able to get red earth. Alright? From its general redness. So it's a direct lie. Affecting or concerning all or most people. So it... They say 51%. But more than 51%. They, they're just saying like 75%. Alright? Now let's look up... Well, what does the earth look like? I type, I typed it in. How much of... I typed in how much red soil is in the earth. It says 13%. So 13% is not 51%. All right, even though the majority of the earth, I would say so. Well, there you go. At least what, 80, 80, 87% of the earth is different shades of brown to sand colors. All right, I think I'll pull another one up. Also, um, then I typed in red uh, soil Wikipedia. It typically develops in warm temperatures. Let um, say here, red soils are an important resource because they make up a large portion of farmland on the earth in countries such as China, India, and Greece where there are large amounts of red soil. Understanding the properties are critical to successful agriculture let's go down and so these are the lands where there's red soil exists all right but you know it's only 13 percent of the earth all right so it's not general meaning mostly red soils include multiple soils ultra soils there's different classifications and are classified as red soils when they develop a distinct reddish color which can vary from reddish brown to reddish yellow due to their high iron content in general red soils possess some characteristics of good growing they are typically ascetic soils which can be positive for agriculture but in the case often causes a lack of sufficient nutrients these soils are also prone to frequent drought in drier regions all right so that's the red soil yeah, soil fertility and management practices red soils are typically difficult crop cultivation because high latching leads to low water holding capacity low nutrients low organic matter hummus and acidification acidification acid uh, fluctuations in the concentration of iron within red soils are found to have significant implications on its fertility and growth properties 
the fertility of red soils can be improved with various farming techniques all right so you can make stuff grow in red soil but it's typically not good you have to uh, alter you know, the, the composition to make things grow all right so that is incorrect that the earth is generally red all right uh, so I think I put in so what color is earth soil all right so we got grays blacks whites reds browns yellows and greens it was, a, it was a chart that I saw. All right, what color is soil? So there you go. You know what Esau say? For its general redness. All right, meaning that the loose debris, the top layer of soil, and the organic matter. Is generally red. All right, so to prove the atom definition, all right. Says um, soil soil color is determined by mineral composition, element concentration, organic matter, and moisture content. It reflects soil properties and soil process, and it is an important diagnostic feature for soil horizon delineation and soil classification. Soil color has been described on both dry and moist soil samples by comparing its color with the Munsell color chart. Munsell color system describes a soil color using three attributes hue and base color 10yr 5yr the lightness range from black to uh, to 10 white and and chroma chroma is color the color intensity and saturation all right so that's the uh So the nutrient content determines the color. All right. All right, so according to Esau, the earth is mostly red. Alright, so when you see red, you'll start seeing iron. Right, which you have to use certain uh, practices to aid in the nutrient to put you have to put nutrients into the ground in these red soils all right to get your crops to yield the proper increase all right we got organic matter hummus topsoil layer elvulian layer all right pronouncing it wrong all right so there you go so you can't say so you can't agree with that def that definition uh, from a general redness I completely dis disproved that earth is not generally red so that's a direct lie all right so Adama doesn't mean red Adama means black or colored all right or dark skinned well not really skin but uh, dark earth earth looking soil soil looking all right I'll put another one in you can know my mind runs on pictures all right let's see what's it Lord God planted a garden east one in Eden my garden so I knew, knew what I was gonna say 
All right. Knew what I was going to say. All right. So Earth mostly red. So I don't know. That's so that's so, and remember that these some of these definitions are used uh, specifically to throw you off on what the Lord's people really look like. All right. All right, we gotta let's move on. So, point is pretty much made that that that's a it's a complete lie. The Earth is mostly different shades of brown, uh, black, uh, yellow, uh, even actually, you know, uh, gray. Uh, there is so. Maybe we're just gonna move on to his icons. Well, no, Ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about nine to six years before the flood, and eight, and one of eight persons to survive, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, meaning dark brown melanated or light brown melanated peoples. All right, which is everybody really, but uh, not the Negroes and the so-called blacks, uh, Latinos, Native Americans will be considered under the Negroes. All right not the negroes so the negroes us my my people do not come we're not hamites all right that's that this is i believe david or peter paul angel i think it might be gabriel um and mary all right as you can see, they're not red. They're not mostly red. The earth from its general redness. Alright. So that's just a lie. So they, they took the word Adama, which means earth ground. Then they, then they put in the, or the earth from its general redness. Because it's mostly, the earth is mainly red. Alright. Crown, what else we got here? Earth ground, earth ground, yeah. So then you click on it, it says go back to then they say Adam. What you can say Adam means ruddy. All right, but it doesn't mean red though. Red and ruddy are two different words. Alright. Translates this red, red, red. So they're trying to uh, condition your mind to think that Adam means red. All right, so we're gonna put Adam in. Let's see, the first time it shows up, two nineteen. So so it was one twenty. Adam, the first man. It says one that is one and is red. It says the Arabs distinguish two races of men, one red. All right, red and ruddy don't mean the same thing, which we call white, so or the other black. So they basically saying that if you're red and ruddy, it's white, and the other is black. So that proves that they're lying, because they said the, the, uh, Adama means. Uh, red from the earth's general redness all right from the earth's general redness so color chart the earth's general redness all right so they so they said adam means red that's what they're saying and it's in and the proof they have is the earth is generally red, meaning mostly affecting most people in places. General. Alright. Which we call white. And then but they they were they weren't uh, white until what's like the fifteen hundreds. That's when they created the uh, the term white as a uh, reference in a person. Like a race of people or a group of people being white. That's a new term. Right, so again, this is like like kind of breaking the strongholds, where it says uh, Adam, 
which proves that when they when they're writing these definitions for these dictionaries, all right, not everything, just you know what I'm talking about here, and some other things, well, a lot of other things, that they're they're using new definitions, all right, because white as a race wasn't created uh, until like fifteen hundreds or the sixteen hundreds. I know one date is sixteen eighty one. White race sixteen eighty one. How white people were invented by playwright sixteen thirteen. So it's different. Um, it says uh, the Jacob Jacobian playwright Thomas Middleton invented the concept of white people on the 29th October 1613, the date that this his play The Triumphants of Truth was first performed. The phrase was first uttered by the character of an African king who looks out upon an English audience and declares, I see an amazing set upon the faces of these white people. The word rang in strange gazes. As far as I and others have been able to tell, Middleton's play is the first printed example of a European author referring to fellow Europeans as white people. I hope you can see that. This is uh, eon.co. Donate now. Uh, Middleton's play is. I see the amazing faces of these white people. All right, so. So you can't say this is an ancient, but on red, I see amazing set upon the faces of these white people. A year later, English commander John Rifle of Jamestown, Virginia, took as his bride an Algonquian Al 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 princess named Matoka, Matoaka, whom we call Pocahontas. The literary critic Christopher Hawkins reported that King James I was at first uh, perturbed when he learned of the marriage, but when he was not out, and well, King James was a so called black man. All right. But this was not out of fear of mis miscegenation. The interbreeding of peoples. James' reluctance, uh, Hawkins explained, was because Rafael, a commander, had, without his sovereign permission, wed the daughter of a foreign princess. King James was not worried about the pollution of Rafael's line. Right, right. Well, because King James was a so-called black man, so that's not uh, important here. Well, I guess you can say it's important. It was white history, what did I put in? White creation, 1681. Do one more. White. There's another one. So 1613. Uh, white history month, day 13. White people were invented, 1681. So we got 1613. We have 1681. Uh, this may sound shocking, surely. White people inhabited countries across Europe for hundreds, if not thousands of years, right? The idea to create white people, a group distinct European nationalists together into a single group had not been done until 1681. All right, what happened in 1681 to cause colonial lawmakers to create classifications of people who had never considered themselves a group what inspired them to invent white people white people were invented in 1681 all right so yeah there we go it's, it's a lot there so 
Uh, so it's all free men in colonial America had the same opportunities as a matter of law. African men could vote and they did they could own slaves and they did they could marry someone of the opposite sex and they did Jacqueline okay Jacqueline but to Laura all right I don't know how uh, how true that is they could vote um, I guess if they were uh, free this was a thing but if you were bondmen, you couldn't vote. Um, in 1619, 1620, the odd Angolians arrived in Virginia, by the way, the Portuguese slavers. This is the first known instance of African slaves in British colonies at the time were about 700 or so Europeans living in the colony of Virginia. So this, the distinction between slaves and indentured servants was muddled as the colonies hadn't yet formalized slavery into law. Some men who were African born or who were of African descent became freemen. Some purchased their freedom, uh, completed their indenture, or were freed via the will of their deceased owner. Yeah, so it was like the wild, let's say the wild, wild west. It was wasn't a law and then they started formalizing it and you know certain persecutions and then examples were made to to control and subjugate you know so it, it was you know planned and organic you know the yeah, slavery indentured or bond right in 1664 maryland passed a law making it illegal for english women to marry slaves of african descent so yeah it was like i would say that'd be like organic they started seeing certain problems would come up. So let's say with mixed people, mixed say black men or whatever. They said, no, we gotta stop this and then preborn foresight. So it says uh, Maryland's anti miss this is miscegenation 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 law in 1681 punished or prohibited marriage between a white person and a specific non-white person so maybe yeah this law was created to stop interracial marriage that's why they classified themselves as white all right so 1681 1613 all right when a bible was written you know 5,000 plus years before that before 1681 so you can't say um white means uh you're red so esau you're easy man you're easy the the arabs distinguish two races of men one red which we call which we call white there was no concept of of a white race, okay? Let's say during uh, 100 A.D., 300 A.D., 450 A.D., there was no concept of a white race. Saying red means you're a white person is a new concept that at least started in 1613, all right, and was put into law in 1681, all right? It says, but both races are sprung from Adam. It is neither a state of plural form, but often used. All right. That's the main point there. It's a show less. Can we do that? We can just read. All right. All right. So, yeah, this, this definition is, is wrong. You, there was no, the Arabs didn't call. Uh, pale faced people, uh, white people. All right, they called them either what pale face, red. All right, if they were describing what they look like, all right, Edomites, yeah, because Edomites were red. Now, ruddy, we look up ruddy, it just it means color, it means light brown skinned. All right, that's ruddy. So I'll put ruddy animals in. 
So it doesn't mean there's a difference between being ruddy and being uh, red slash pale. All right, this is red all over like a like a robe. All right. All right, that's red all over, meaning they lack the soil color. All right. And Esau has mixed himself with all all the peoples, all the nations, including Israelites. So, if an Israelite takes a you know an Edomite woman, a pale faced woman, then if the Israelite takes a pale faced woman, then the child's gonna come out more uh, fair skin. All right, and they may come out looking uh, ruddy in a sense. All right? Now, ruddy also can be used poetically too. To just mean uh, uh, beautiful. All right. If that's ruddy, it just means uh, a, a lighter version of uh, a brown person. All right. Just different. All right. Because sometimes, when, by contrast, something looks beautiful because it sticks out. All right. So that's ruddy. It just means a lighter brown skin. All right, like red bone, red bone. This means a lighter brown skin. All right. All right, I will close it here. So this is Saint Nicholas and Constantine. All right. So according to Esau, from the Earth's general redness, it's a damn lie, and I've proven it beyond a shadow of any doubt. So if you don't, if you can't get it from here, you you you're spiritually uh, discerned. I mean, you lack the the uh, comprehension to put the pieces together. Uh, if Esau thought bone is somewhere, you, you got to do the research and figure it out. And that's why we're here. So, so I quickly go over this. This is Constantine right here. All right, as you see, he's a brown man. Okay, not uh, mostly red like the earth. Like they say, the earth is mostly red, which is a damn lie. Which I prove beyond a shadow of any doubt. All right. On the left side, you see uh, Nicodemus' father. Nic Nicodemus. St. <laughs> Nicholas is a child. Uh, 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 that's, I mean, that's his uncle. That's a priest. All right. That's the father. That's the mother. As you can see, the women have their hair covered, and she appears to be in order. All right. Because the head covering is, um, is a representation of you being under the authority of your husband. All right. All right, and this is Nicodemus as he got older. Nicodemus, Saint Nicholas as he got older. All right, and this is a dream that King Constantine is having. Emperor Constantine, he's having a dream that he want uh, Saint Nicholas to come to him and help him. And Saint Nicholas saving the young man. Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas here with the crosses. So the point is that the the the, the church fathers. The original church fathers were people of color. They were Israelites that were scattered in Europe uh, and in the East. And again, I mean, it's either Peter or Paul. Angel. And you got Mary, I believe, right here. All right. So that's it. Uh, strongholds, you know, the bones, you have to. Know the, know the Hebrew, know when there's the clerical errors and uh, just direct lies. All right. Adam means soil, loose, the loose debris of soil. All right. You look up the color of the earth. So if Esau says that the earth from its general redness, the loose earth right there, I'm like, then you, you should know that that's a damn lie. And if they try to say, well, the two, uh, two classifications of men, one, Red and one black. So Esau admits that he's red. The Arabs distinguish two races of men. One red and other black. So that can be right. But how look how Satan is. Then he'll throw ruddy in there. You know, ruddy and red are two different ones. Ruddy just means light brown. Or not your typical dark brown skin man. Or typical black brown skin man. All right, a lighter, a lighter, uh, a lighter brown. Not no, no, not um, 
looking red, two different words. All right. And said we that which we call white. Well, we started calling them white in 1681, 1613. And that's something that creation of East that, that the, the Caucasians made up. All right. So it's either you're a red person or you're a black person. All right. So what was Adam? All right. Now, he's right. Both of these races are sprung from Adam. All right. And the first, say, red man was Cain. And then Esau, which is Esau. It tells you. Esau. All right. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment and they called his name Esau. All right. Oh yeah, they call his name red over like a hairy. So so Esau so um they admit that they're red people. All right. So who looks like the red people? The little hats, the guys that wear the little hats to worship uh, the Talmud, they're they're red. All right. For the main part, you got some of them that they're mixed with the, the different nations, and, and you have our people scattered amongst them also. But the core of them is what red. All right, and they created white in 1681, 1613, and probably before that, but it was in law. In 1681, all right, because it was because it was used to. This is one of the reasons why, because it was used to stop interracial marriages. All right. All right. So I think that's that's pretty much got the information out that I intended to get out, and uh, hope you edified. Shalom.